Thanks as always, Bruce Wappy. Thank you, Greg. All right, time for our political panel now. And joining us right here in the studio today, Labor Senator Mariel Smith. Welcome, Mariel. And Liberal Senator Andrew Bragg. Same to you, Andrew. Why don't we start, Mariel, with you and the Qantas Qatar issue. I know it's been the subject of questions in the chamber that you both occupy. Uh, Penny Wong, we discovered today, had a phone call on Monday with the Prime Minister of Qatar. It went to the 2020 strip searching of women, including Australia. Australian women in Doha Airport. Uh, is it clear to you why they didn't also canvass or why she wouldn't explain to the Prime Minister the rejection of the Qatar Airways flight speed? Look, Greg, I'm not privy to every conversation our foreign minister has, but what I would say is these sorts of conversations are pretty routine in her course of work as foreign minister. Um, the question with Qatar here, I mean, the, the minister's been pretty clear. This was a decision taken in the national interest. It's a decision which is really no different to the decisions made um, by, you know, the previous former coalition government of which Andrew was a part under former minister Michael McCormack. It's a national interest question, but in terms of specific conversations, the foreign minister has had, I'm not in those conversations. All right, but there's going to be a lot more examination around this, isn't there, Andrew Bragg, because of what happened in the Senate yesterday, the creation of a Senate committee inquiry into this very issue. Can you succinctly define for us what its purpose is? What are the unanswered questions? Well, there is a question about competition policy here, and the competition review has been a shambles. I mean, it initially was announced as not having aviation in it, and then it was announced as having it in there. This decision has been made, and the reality is that people want lower airfares. There is a very serious cost of living problem in the country, and any judgment to reduce competition is only going to exacerbate that. So that's what the committee will be looking at. What about the conduct of ministers or of officials in this government even. Um, some of the questions in the reps have obviously been to Catherine King. Who did you speak to? Did you talk to Alan Joyce? Is all of that material? Look, I'm sure those matters can be canvassed, but ultimately the public interest here is how you calibrate the best possible competition policy and how you get the lowest possible prices. And if governments are making judgments to inflate prices for other reasons, then that would be material. OK. And, and you think... Well, I don't want to be accused through Greg. I mean, we need to do the work in the committee. Sure. All right. OK. It's a, it's a pretty sudden interest in aviation, though, isn't it? I mean, the former government oversaw um, huge challenges in the aviation sector during the pandemic, including the collapse of our secondary car carrier Virgin Australia. I mean, if you're concerned about competition, collapse. Virgin Australia was a pretty significant thing, as too was the denying of JobKeeper to Donata workers, the mass outsourcing um, of work uh, in aviation, in Qantas and other firms. Like, if you're really genuinely concerned about the aviation sector, that's great. Come you on board and let's actually do, do some things to... So you let's want to do extend JobKeeper? That's not what I said, Andrew. <laughs> I very clearly said, I mean, you guys failed aviation. You, you let people working in that sector down. And I don't remember a single moment of debate in the Senate devoted to the aviation sector and all these issues in competition which happened during the pandemic. I just think it's a bit of faux concern here. OK, well, we'll keep across that because it's got a way to run through the Senate inquiry and beyond. Why don't we go to The Voice? And a lot of points have been made in the Parliament this week about Peter Dutton's position, which is if it fails and it well might, based on existing polls anyway, uh, he would be up as Prime Minister for a second referendum. Uh, why wouldn't Labor fall in behind that under those circumstances? I know there's a few scenarios there, Marielle, but uh, why wouldn't Labor, for the sake of salvaging recognition at the very least, if this fails? Well, Greg, I think Peter Dutton's talking absolute nonsense here. If you're genuine about listening to the voices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians, you can't fall over at the very first hurdle by ignoring the question they want in the referendum. Um, I don't think anyone genuinely believes what Peter Dutton is putting up here, but ultimately it doesn't matter. Like, this isn't actually about politics. It's not about Peter Dutton. It's not about what happens in the parliament. The only people who can determine this question are the Australian people, and I think there's an enormous sense of unity and purpose towards a yes vote, towards making a difference here. I mean, I was at the campaign launch in Adelaide um, last week, and it was an unlifting moment 
moment because I think people know that what we're doing at the moment isn't working. We need to do something different. So I think, you know, the, the sooner we can get away from Peter Dutton and his silly commentary, the better, and back to the conversations on the ground about how we make a difference. Well, acknowledge we're definitely getting about three steps ahead of ourselves. But since it's a matter for public debate at present, put on the agenda by Peter Dutton, how does it sit with you, Andrew, this idea that don't look here at this referendum, we've got another one on offer further down the track. You'd have trouble selling that, wouldn't you? Well, I'll be voting yes in this referendum and I think it would be in the interest of the country if this was adopted by the Australian people and a judgement about any further referenda would be subject to consultation with Indigenous people and, of course, the rest of the community. It's more than a distraction would you assess? Is it a, a, dis, a you know, disruption, no, no, I mean, no. destructive, <laughs> destructive even to the current proposal? Look, I, I think there is a frustration about the way that the process has been run and the way the product has been developed, OK? Uh, but I, I don't want to sound too churlish here, but th that is a reality, that the loss of bipartisanship has damaged this agenda. This is uh, not going to be an easy thing to get over the line. And I think a lot of people have frustration about the way that it's been run and therefore alternative proposals will always be part of the public debate. You sound like you're more pessimistic than ever right now. Well, I mean, I read the polls, you read the polls. We all know it's not in the best possible shape. Uh, but as I said to you just a moment ago, I mean, my preference would for this... My preference is that this would be... Sorted by the people, yeah. 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 All right, Marielle Smith, quick one for you. I don't think Andrew is uh, particularly across it, but you happen to have chaired the committee inquiry into concussion, which mm. is, uh, with growing awareness, a deep problem in sport and across sports in this country. What's got to come from that? Yeah, look, Greg... This was a really interesting inquiry. We heard from uh, 90 submitters. We held a number of public hearings. And what was really clear in the evidence we received is that um, when it comes to concussion in support, sport, there's real concern amongst the Australian public that when their loved one enters the sporting pitch, are they going to be safe and are they going to be OK, whether that's about elite sport or whether that's about grassroots sport. And we know this sort of win-at-all-cost, uh, she'll-be-right culture has pervaded here and that's left people unsafe. We need more research, we need more data, um, we need a, a step change in the way uh, we look at concussion in Australia. That's part to do with government but it's a much bigger community issue and it's a bigger issue for the codes as well. Yeah all right we might get to talk one on one about mm. that on a future occasion and a quick one Murray Darling Basin plan Tanya Plibersek is uh, ploughing ahead with this. In the Senate uh, it might have an uncertain fate though. Uh, are you definitely ruling out coalition support for the government's revised plan? Well it's got to work for all the states obviously and some states are more reliant on irrigation for their communities' survival than other states. So, uh, I mean, I'd be consulting with my state colleagues before I made any important public statements. Right. You, you've got some background in irrigation communities. Well, I know it's a bit I think sensitive. it's sensitive, right? Yeah. It's very sensitive because if you take irrigation out of a regional community, it means that the lifeblood of the community can, can go overnight. So it needs to be managed carefully. All right, Marielle, uh, the Greens are hedging, I think, at the moment, probably subject to whatever comes of their own Senate inquiry on that. Can the numbers be found by the end of this year on the Murray-Darling Basin Bill? Well, I absolutely hope so, Greg. I mean, the future of the, the Murray River is absolutely essential to the future of my state. This is an existential question for South Australia. The river is the lifeblood of my state. And we know that under the former government, the capitulation, the kicking the can down the road on the plan has left us in a really precarious position. We've got a plan on the table now which is achievable, which will see those 450 gigalitres restored. And for South Australia, this is absolutely essential. And I urge anyone with any degree of concern about the future of South Australia and the environment to get behind it. All right, sounds like that'll be the subject of uh, much more discussion and uh, number wrangling, I suppose, in the Senate. Mario Smith, we're going to wrap it up there. Andrew Bragg, thanks so much for Great. joining us once again. To thanks, both. Greg.